Hello my soccer universe. I thought it's Easter Sunday and yeah, daylight. I have plans in the evening. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna do this quickly now and I thought I'll give you a nice short read as a reading suggestion. I'm talking about Forza Italia by Paddy Agnew, which was written around and shortly after the 2006 World Cup, so that's why you have here kind of the World Cup trophy in there. I have to say this was a real, is a real fun, um, I want to say introduction to Serie A, with lots of stories, lots of backgrounds, lots of personal stories. The author is of Irish uh, origin, and basically uh, the main uh, book starts with, yeah, this is how we decided to move to Italy, me and my wife, and see um, how it's going there and all the difficulties. I remember they, wanted, they were choosing first between, couldn't decide whether they want to go to Spain or France, and then they ended up in Italy and uh, all are saying, yeah, this was not kind of this happy in-between, <laughs> but it was its, all, its own story. But he moved there in the mid-80s, right when Serie A was about to become the best league in the world. So uh, the author has a lot of background. I think as no, I knew him from ESPN, he was a frequent contributor there. So that was actually fun to have something like that. And yeah, uh, it's a mixture between uh, stories about background of Serie A, which I think is about two thirds of the book and one third is uh, that we have um, the one third is kind of personal backstory, which is very, very interesting. And I actually want to read two passages out of that one because uh, I found that there's one that is the stuff that you may know, and that's the first one that I want to read you. And then there's another one of the story that you don't know, and this is something if you live in Italy, this is stuff that you uh, will realize. The first one is, of course, about my favorite player when I grew up. On the evening of the 5th of July 1986, a promising, slightly bewildered 21-year-old Dutch striker called Marco van Basten drove through the gates of San Martino, the magnificent 18th century villa at Arcore, north of Milan, owned by Berlusconi. Van Basten was on his way to a secret rendezvous, summoned by Berlusconi, who, just four months earlier, had bought one of Italy's most famous clubs, AC Milan. The young Van Basten was not to know it, but his secret meeting was to lay the foundation not only for huge sporting success for AC Milan, but also, at least partly, for future political triumphs for Mr. Berlusconi. Van Basten would prove to be a key element in an impressive array of playing and a managerial talent brought together at AC Milan by Berlusconi, talent that very quickly saw the club establish itself as amongst the best in the world. Destined to be nicknamed the Swan of Utrecht because of his elegant angular looks, Van Basten was to become one of the great strikers of the modern game, winner of the World and European Player of the Year awards while with AC Milan. He climaxed his first season in Italian football in 1988 with a superb European Championship tournament in Germany. Playing for the Netherlands against the USSR in the Munich final, he wrapped up the Dutch victory in true Roy of the Rovers fashion by scoring one of the greatest goals of all time, volleying home from prohibitively tight Engel a 60-yard crossfield pass. Great, 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 great goal. Van Basten also experienced huge success in the Milan shirt. With two years of that uh, July rendezvous at Arcore, AC Milan were winning the first league title of the Berlusconi era. And one year after they, that they were at the new camp in Barcelona winning the European Cup. The new look AC Milan not only blazed a trail of spectacular footballing success, but also set new standards, at least for Italian clubs in terms of commercial organization, professional management and salary levels. I'm gonna leave you there. There's a whole um, uh, chapter uh, dedicated to the rise of Milan and also what it meant together with Berlusconi, which yeah is the side that I don't enjoy all that much. I always maintained I don't care about him politically. I don't care about him as a person. I care that he puts money in the club, which he only did when it uh, counted politically. So yeah, 
that was always a little bit. Uh, I think starting in '94 with the big triumph, you could see that his interest in Milan was then more on the political side. But I want to read you um, another chapter. It's the beginning of chapter eight, um, which I think tells a completely different side, and I absolutely love this one. It is the 25th of May, 1997, the second last day of the season. Fiorentina are at home to Reggiana, a side already relegated from Serie A. After an hour of the game, the contest is over, with Fiorentina cruising home 3-0 thanks to two goals from Argentine ace Gabriel Batigol Batistuta and one from striker Anselmo Robiatti. With just six minutes of normal time remaining, Reggiana, coach Francesco Odo, is about to make his third substitution of the afternoon. With the match lost beyond recall, it is hard to see what point there is in bringing on a third player. Even stranger is the fact that as Otto prepares to send him on, send on the substitute, another player on the bench, experienced midfielder Fernando de Napoli, angrily intervenes. Even if he now has problems with his knees and is coming to the end of his career, de Napoli is the sort of player who commands respect. De Na uh, in a 15-season career, he not only picked up 54 caps for Italy, but was also a key figure in the Maradona-led Napoli side that won the league title in 1987 and 1990. The Napoli is a heavy dude. He and Odi are shouting at one another. In the end, the Napoli makes his point. Odo changes his mind about the substitution he was about to make and instead brings on his reserve goalkeeper, Ettore Gandini, in place of his first choice, Mar Marco Balotta. For 28-year-old Gandini, this is the realization of a lifelong dream. This is his belated Serie A debut. The moment he has uh, worked towards since he joined his first club as a madly enthusiastic 11-year-old. After 10 years as a professional player, laboriously working his way up from Serie C2, he has finally made it to the top of the greasy pole. He has made it into Serie A. Gandini was not to know it, but the following seven minutes of football were to constitute his total career in Serie A. So, very, very interesting point. There are also, the nice thing, numerous pictures in there, from personal pictures to, you know, you have, for instance, the first Milan side, and Maradona. You have, uh, of course, Marco van Basten and Milan winning in there, which always sits high with me. But you also have, let me see that. We have Ettore Gandini here below Francesco Totti's wedding. And this dude here, Paolo Di Canio, making his reviled fascist salute. And you know, we have all kinds of joy and problems within Italy. So, yeah, it's a very engrossing read. I won't say it's the best book I have on Serie A, but it's, it's a really nice, uh, relatively quick read, so I totally enjoyed that one. I would say it's my second favorite. I have a, one that goes way deeper that I will uh, present to you some other time, but as an intro to Serie A and the soccer mad country that is Italy, it's hard to beat that one. This is a really, really good book, highly recommend it, a lot of fun to read. Anyway, let me know if you read this book or if you like this book. If you have any other book suggestions, drop a comment below. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.